there. It was, it was we're gonna, we're gonna, this was supposed to come to me. That's what I was. Yeah. Right, we're going to go live. So we're going to, we're going to lift up the guys that, um, you know, that the enemy's been really hitting, you know, this last week. And, uh, you know, a couple, a couple of them uh, <coughs> had, had been um, kind of hiding things. And Ruben and I, we had prayed that God would just uh, expose yeah. everything and remove See, we, we don't care if somebody is um, struggling with unclean spirits because Jesus will get them free. The problem is when somebody wants to choose a lifestyle of that unclean spirit, then we remove the person out of his care. They're always welcome to come to church. You know, they're welcome to come to church and so forth. But they're not welcome to live in a place where we're doing discipleship and we're building people up for doing the works of the Lord. Uh, because even the ones, and, and God has, has um, he's gone a long distance with me. I got a fly that's a... Right, there's no fly that's a fly. I keep saying you're wearing your face. Hmm? You keep saying you're wearing your face. Is it here? No. Who's got it? It's a, maybe a spirit has possessed the fly. <laughs> Anyways, if somebody, um, if somebody is, um, I'm going to start slapping something. Hey, it says, it says if, if, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, you turn the other off. Yeah. So, yeah. If anybody slap your brother, you're right. <laughs> so anyways. Um, but no, seriously, we want to take it serious about uh, yeah. praying for people that they're not in a good place spiritually. People that have, have relapsed, people that um, are out there, you know, in the wrong attitude. Because just because we kick somebody out of in his care is, does not mean that uh, we don't like them, does not mean that we're against them. You know, when, when somebody's doing wrong and wanting to do wrong, they'll drag other guys down. Yeah. And so they're always welcome to come to church as long as, you know, they're not, you know, uh, doing certain things or whatever. You know, the Bible talks about sometimes turning people over to the devil for the destruction of their soul. Their spirit might be saved. We've done that before to people that have been real rebellious and real hardcore. And that's not a fun thing to do. Not too many times. And sometimes there's been guys that come in here and they they think it's okay, you know, to, to call themselves a Christian and go ahead and sleep with somebody outside of marriage. And I said, hey, I don't even want you eating with the other brothers. And, you know, you know uh, you're know, you wrong. The Bible says not to even eat with somebody who, who, is, who is doing this type of behavior. And he's not talking about people that are caught up in the world who, you know, are at your business, who are not a believer and all that. He's talking about saying, man, if you're a Christian and Christ is in you, you walk a different walk. You talk a different talk. You know, and uh, so uh, we have to have compassion towards the unbelievers and let them know that, you know, Jesus loves them and they can be saved. And let the Holy Spirit and Jesus come inside them. When Christ comes inside me, when he came inside of me, then I didn't, wasn't trying to get away with stuff. I wasn't trying to be wrong. I wanted to be right. So if you told me that, you know, God will forgive me, I wouldn't use that as a, I wouldn't use grace as an advantage to go be stupid. Yeah. I would use grace as an advantage to come closer to Christ, you know. So it's about your heart posture, a lot of it. And, you know, the reality is, is that we really need to pray for the fear of the Lord because it's missing in a lot of good men who come in here. I've sometimes had some real just intense spiritual experiences where I've seen hell. I've seen people go there. I've had visions of different people. One guy, I don't want to say on camera, before I was going to get down with, he had come after me with a machete and um, and me and his brother were going to go and take care of him and some other people. And the Lord said, now forgive him, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and uh, I ended up forgiving him. I called him up. I said, man, you need to get right to the Lord. He stole some stuff from me. And I had a lot of bad things going in my head that I wanted to do to him. But the Lord showed me a vision of him going into hell and the flames and him screaming. And he was a gang member, you know, from Portland and all that. And um, I, I, was, I went outside his house to look at him because I was going to plot to get, get back at him on some things. And I called him up and said, hey man, I'm, I'm releasing all this, you know, and you just need to give your life to Jesus. Because what I saw was so horrific. Yeah. 
I wouldn't want my worst enemy to be involved in that or experience that. And I knew Christ died for him, even though he did me dirty. Yeah. So the Lord was kind of like, hey, forgive him, let him go, all this stuff. So I did. So the thing is, is that forgiveness is not an option for us. And the fear of God, if we're smart, we're not going to be praying for things of this world before we're praying for compassion and the fear of God. The yeah. fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. What does wisdom bring? It brings riches and honor, long life, length of days, protection. It says that the angel of the Lord encamps about all those who fear him. This guy that came in the other day and cussed out Wayne. Wayne had been very compassionate with the guy, prayed for the guy many times. And then a day later, a guy beats him up so bad he's in the hospital for three days. And he calls me up and he said, he said, I know you guys have paid for somebody to beat me up because of this. I said, listen, do you think I'm like that? I said, I, I said, you're sometimes one of the worst guys I've met, but I really want you just to walk with Jesus. Why would I pay somebody to beat you up? I would never do this. This wouldn't even come to my mind, you know? Like, that's just wrong. Now, if somebody comes to hurt one of my fellow brothers, or me, or Wayne, and the last resort would be using physical um, items like a gun in order to protect the people that I love, I would do that. I wouldn't like to do it, but I think that we have so much spiritual authority, many times we can rebuke those things and not ever have to shoot a man we can stop it in spirit and save them from dying and going to hell. You know, we've got a lot more authority than we think, but we know. That's what I'm saying, because I was even thinking about this guy's threats. I was like, okay, I'm going to get, you know, LeVon a 38 special. I'm going to get Sean my shotgun. I'm going to get Ruben, you know, my AR-15. I'm going to get somebody in the back house another gun. And then we'll get down. But the Lord was like, no. I can assure you that there's a sandwich for And I remember the Lord telling me something that... He said to me, where I'm taking you, even in Africa and the other places, yeah. you're not going to need it. You're not going to need that. And so the I Lord is it. teaching me some other things on defense. I believe We're it. not of my military background. Yeah. And I would never be happy in ever to, to take a man's life. But I, and I haven't. And thank God for it. But I've had friends die with the Arabs in the Middle East. But I've gone over there to preach the gospel to the Arabs so they get saved. And I didn't have to go over there and blast them in the head and kill them. You know, I'd rather see them get saved. You know, I'd rather see these suicide bombers get saved where they're not killing people and they're loving people. They get to know the true God, the one that put the stars in the heavens, not a false God, not paganism, not going to hell. So anyways, we've got a job to do. We've got to get down to business. But I don't want to pray for the people that we had to kick out. And yeah. there are some people here that are getting kicked out sure. that sure. didn't even fail a drug test. Sure. But it's only because there's been a lot of of evidence linking them to dealing to other people to help them to fall. And, and they need to wake up. You know, that's all there is to it. They might not have got caught, but we know in the spirit what they did and what they're about. And they're, 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 they're some of the greatest ministers and ministries. Some of the guys that I know that have done the most for the Lord. Even Reuben down in California used to run around with a shotgun in the front of his trike. He was crazy. And when Pastor Reed led him to the Lord, he's had a big church now. You know, he started many men's homes. He's been involved with evangelism all over the world. They have just phenomenal, you know. One time he got so burned out by other Christians that he quit and ran to his mom's in Texas. Larry Reed went down there with a bullhorn outside his house. Ruben, the Lord's not done with you. He has need of you. He has a, who is this crazy guy and how did he find me, you know. Larry Reed should have been a bounty hunter, you know. <laughs> he found him. He That's got awesome. back in the ministry. His wife just recently passed away. He's been he's been serving God for many years, but so that that's what's rough is when you see a ministry on somebody, but you see him bleeding for the devil, yeah. and you see him dealing drugs, and you see him doing this stupid stuff. I think that's why sometimes we got to be careful to let and let people know the call before they let it work, because then it becomes their like that's their right. Thing to say. They think that that saves them as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, or, or, or it, just, it just gives them a big head and they think, oh, it's like, especially if they don't understand the prophetic, it's like, look, it's something God, God called you to do, but unless you're obedient and actually follow his will, do his will, you, you might not even make it. You might not even do that. That's, that's, that's a hard one. That's, that's a hard one because when you bring a prophet or someone with great knowledge of God and they just put up upon them to let them know, 
you know. No, I'm just saying. Sometimes you gotta be quiet. Sometimes the prophetic words not should, should not be released until mm -hmm. that, until they're ready for it. Because Wayne's even told me, okay, he's even told me everything the Lord has shown me about you, Ruben, that I never, I didn't ever told him yet. Because you weren't ready for it. Because the thing is, when people don't know who they are in Christ, it, that becomes their identity. It's like, you know, someone, they're just not mature enough to ex to be to accept the position that God has for them. I think, so I, think I think if he is, is listening to the Lord, if yeah. Wayne showed him not to say it at that time, we got to be obedient. I'm just saying sometimes it's think, better. We, I think we, we need to be mature. It's better, it's better to tell somebody what God's plan is for them, unless the Lord tells us not to. And the reason it is for that is because. If somebody has used that in order to be stupid, thinking that they're going to be okay, there's bad teaching. Because that that's, I, I see what you're saying. But I think it's important to, I think sometimes to teach it. But yeah. see, the, the, the reality of it is, guys, gifts are given. You and I, there's treasures in every one of us in earthen vessels. And we can work miracles. We can cast out devils by authority. We can do all this stuff. You know what we can't do? Fruit, gifts are given, but let me tell you something right now. Fruits are grown. That's enduring. That's discipleship. That's waking up and doing things when you don't want to do it. That's 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 honoring your friends above yourself. That's staying to you know with the one you're married with to when it's hard. And it's not easy. And it's rough. It's it's the it's the fruit of the spirit that's grown through what? It's grown through Seeds being planted, watering, working, and fertilizer, and all this. It's not just giving. Gifts are given. Fruits are growing. You can go out and gifting and do, you know, many things. But if you don't have the character, if you don't have of uh, the fruits, you're not going to stay in a place of power with God. You're going to get into pride. You're going to be shipwrecked. You're, you're going to have an extramarital affair. You're going to be embezzling money, doing things that are crazy. But there's got to be, again, there's got to be a, a fear of God, and there's got to be something on the inside of you that says, hey, I'm not sorry that um, I, I got caught. I'm sorry that I did it. You know what I mean? I'm like, like, I'm not worried about what the humans think. I really just wanted to be right before God, because at the end of the day, he's going to judge the living and the dead. All of us are going to stand before the great white throne judgment, and we have to give an account. And look, the... The fruit of the Spirit is grown when you and I are making and doing those hard things, those hard decisions, those, those easy things. The gifts come. They're just given to us by God without repentance. And some people are even using their gifts to lead for destruction in the devil's kingdom. And that, that's what we're seeing. Yeah. But the, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, we want to be men of fruit of the Spirit. You know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness. That's where you're planting the right kind of seeds in your life. It's not just freely giving. It's, it's having that self-control and saying, hey, I'm not going to do this because I love God. And I, and I respect God and I fear God. You know, I'm not going to do this stuff in private and secret. I'm not going to do, you know, it's, it's making those kind of calls where you're, you're, making, you're making that place where, you know, Jesus said that it's like you did this, this, and this. And, you know, you prophesied, you did these miracles, but he says, I never knew you depart from me. You practice lawlessness. He said that you would know a true prophet by their fruits, not by the gifting. Yeah. By the fruits. <coughs> and, so, and so we want to look at the fruit of the person, you know. So anyways, um, but let's pray, Lord, right now, God, we come tonight and we, Lord, we lift up. We lift up these men, Father God, that have been struggling and that have um, gotten into sorcery, witchcraft, with putting chemicals in their body. We lift up, Lord, our brothers, Father God, that have fallen into immorality. We lift up our brothers, God, that um, have been uh, demonized and bound by the power of the devil. And maybe they, they uh, made a decision for the, the devil. We ask God that you bring them. These ones that have been kicked out, you bring them to the end of themselves. That God, there would be the gift of repentance given to them to where they would have a respect, a fear for you, God. That you would wake them up, God. That you'd open their eyes, open their ears. That repentance would be released, the gift of repentance. And that, Lord, that their heart would be softened to God. And that their heart would not be destroyed by the devil. 
but that, that they would destroy the devil. They would, they would walk with you, God. They would turn to you, God. Um, they would repent of their wicked ways, Lord. They would seek you with all their heart. Lord, they would put you in the highest place, oh God. And we ask tonight that we would do the same. We ask, Lord, tonight that we would place you in the highest place. Above all else, it be enthroned on our, our soul, our spirit, our, our body. Lord, we lift you in the highest place. And we say, have your way, God. Whatever you ask us to do, we'll do it. And put in our minds what we will do, and we'll do it without procrastinating. So we thank you, God, for your goodness here. We lift up in his care, Lord. We lift up Sean. We ask, Lord, for good leadership, Lord. We ask for, Lord, the direction of the school and the building of warriors. We ask, God, that you have your way, Lord, in the ministry of God. We ask, Lord, we lift up this um, outreach in El Salvador in November. And we call, Lord, for that soccer stadium, 10,000 people, to be filled with the ones that you call there to be saved. He'll deliver you and be there, and they will be touched by your power. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace right now. In Jesus' name. Pray for that Jesus Marsh that's having a desire. Go ahead, Ruben. I'll come and read. Yes, Father, we thank you for the mighty work that you're going to do in all those who are involved in this marsh. This Saturday at Portland, we just thank you, Lord, that you're going to keep everyone safe. And Lord, we just pray that you will lead each one of us. So let, let there be. Uh, we, I believe, Lord, there's going to be souls being be saved, and we believe that, and we were praying for that, and we thank you for that. And Lord, let there be such a powerful unity. Let the, let your glory be upon every single soul that goes out there, Lord. Let it, let, let the, let the light shine in Portland, because Portland is going through some major darkness, God. So we thank you for the mighty work that you're going to do. We believe in this. We believe that the word, the prophetic word that that Dee Braxton brought. Uh, about Portland, Portland is getting invaded <laughs> because man, we believe that. That's the, that's the what the, that's what the march is about. We thank you for it, Lord. We thank you that there are going to be many souls getting yes. saved. We thank you that revival is breaking out, and we thank you for the mighty work you're doing. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I just lift up the churches today in Portland and Vancouver. Yes. I ask, Lord, that they would have such an effectiveness to tear down the spirit of perversion. Lord, of the immorality and the feel-good thing that says you can do whatever you want, you can live the way you want, and you're okay. Yes. Lord, let the fear of the Lord come upon the church. And Father God, we lift up, Lord, those caught tonight in addiction. We lift up those caught in immoral relationships, Father God, outside of what the Word of God speaks of a man and a woman in a married relationship. God, we, we break off, Lord, this perversion. We, Lord, we... We call for, Father God, those spirits that would try to uh, keep, Lord, the ones that are in fornication, the ones that are in, uh, caught up in lesbian, homosexual, transgender, cross-dressing. Lord, we love them. And the devil has lied to this city and said that the Christians do not love them. Satan has taken them to hell. There's a mass suicide rate, rate with these people. There's a mass drug use rate with these people. And we call for the freedom of Christ. Yes. Although sexually immoral, sure. just like you sure. brought us freedom. Sure. And you've delivered us from the sexual immorality. Lord, let your freedom, let your love come through your church to bring freedom, God, to the lost and broken tonight. Lord, to those that you've called the great things, but they're not living in the way that they should be in the greatness. Sure. It's caught up in immorality and they're walking in reality. We call, Father God, right now for your hand now on the church to bring truth. That we would not bring a message of lies about you, Father, to them. And we would also not approve of things that you don't approve of. But Lord, the message from heaven, your love for the people would come. And that, that everybody, Lord, tonight struggling with, Lord, Lord uh, homosexuality, transgender, cross-dressing. That first of all, that that perverse lie, that that's okay and that's normal, would be torn down. We come against that lie that's a lie. We tear it down. It's not normal. It's not right. And Lord, you didn't create us that way. So we come against that lying spirit that we didn't even insinuate that it's normal. Lord, it's not. And we ask God for the truth of your love to penetrate hearts and bring, Father God, bring freedom and Lord, bring change, the right kind of Holy Ghost change in their lives that you had to us. That we're walking in the Spirit now because of your blood. We thank you for your blood. We blood wash Portland. We blood wash Vancouver. We blood wash in his care and life house and the churches of this city. We pray for strength and boldness on the pastors to stand up and speak the truth, God, 
about homosexuality and not bend and not bow and not break, but be bold about it. Speak the truth about uh, abortion being a murder and be bold about it. Speak the truth about how much God loves people and be bold about it. Speak the truth about repentance from dead works in the fear of the Lord and be bold about it. God, we thank you for boldness and fire. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for setting us free. Lord, for we were winos. We were prostitutes. We were pimps. Lord, we were addicted and afflicted. We were religious, God. Some of us were in love with money, and you set us free from greed and selfishness, God. I thank you, God, right now for doing it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I got freedom. So we got a brother right now. Um, they're doing a prayer in the hospital right now at 7.30 at Milk Lane. Um, they're praying for a brother Ruben and we got a tomorrow second. Okay, Action go ahead and lift them up. We'll come back so, home. Yeah. He's praying to bring me home. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, that, you know, the doctors are giving us false, 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 false paper, false um, words, Heavenly Father, but we, we come with the truth. We come with the light. We come with, with boldness. You said when there are two more gathers in their power, there's anointing and there's 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 blessing, Heavenly Father. Your word doesn't come void. We in Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, yes. we pray that He's gonna come out all right. Because the doctors don't have the last say, you have the last say, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, right now, with all everybody been praying and bringing him for he's gonna come out the hospital. Walking great again, Heavenly Father. He's going to come out walking better than before. The doctors are going to be so so traumatizing and so confused on what they had in paper and what and what the paper, the last and so on, will become in the outcome of that situation is going to become Heavenly Father. So in Jesus' name, we pray for 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 for, for a miracle, for power, for healing. That He's going to walk out of that hospital anointed, blessed, and and walking better than before. In Jesus' name. Yeah, so, um, uh, that was a good prayer, man. That was powerful. I felt like something happened when we were praying and agreeing for the Portland March and also against that, that line of spirit that comes through the society today that says that um, people can be uh, in any old way they want and God loves them. Hey, God loves every person that's going to be in eternity in hell. Amen. God, God loved that person and gave his life and blood for that person. It doesn't exclude the fact that in the courts of heaven, that person turned away from Christ. That person didn't grab the Lord's hand. That person lived any old way they wanted, you know? And so we need to understand that there, there needs to be a fear of God that comes upon uh, the people of the Lord. And, uh, uh, yeah, I want to... I want to read this um, real quick. Um, I want to, I want to read this. Um, For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. One of them, a prophet of their own, says, um, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. <laughs> hey, the, 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 the sin nature in a believer has to die. Yeah. That we're not living. It says that if, if self-seeking is in your heart, then every evil word will be there. So wake up with the parameter of what am I doing? life because we can we can make something look really good and convince ourselves we're doing right but really not be right at all we can be way off track and it's the word of God that kind of cuts into our heart and, and sharpen if, if, if a person is, is having a real prayer life they're gonna their life is gonna change yeah if somebody's coming here in the prayer in the morning and they're being loud or they're putting on a show or whatever you don't see any fruit in their life they're not real yeah they don't mean their prayer. Now, if they come in and they pray in the Spirit and, and just on sheer willpower, they can be a straight nerd bay with the worst convict motives ever, con men, everything, and be serious about praying in tongues, and they will change. 
Because the Holy Spirit is releasing His power, His revelation, His truth through them, and pretty soon they're going to hate the way they are. Yeah. And that thing of, of them of always trying to con, always trying to be take advantage of them, always trying to do this and that, that's going to be coming and be having a light shine on. And they're, they're either going to give up praying or they're going to change, but they won't continue on. Yeah. Sin is either going to choke prayer or prayer is going to choke sin out. It won't be, it will not happen the same way. The fire of God will come and do it. Hallelujah. But there's people that um, they uh, uh, they have a, a real uh, a real powerful calling, but they never walk into it. They step, never step into it because yeah. they're they're resistant on growing the fruits. Yeah. It's it's a gifts gifts are thrown out there, yeah. and there's different gifts that are without repentance. So if you're not walking with God and you're called to be an evangelist. Then you're going to be a gifted, you know, person, and, and I don't mean to sound crass like this, because when we are preaching the gospel, we're doing it for very serious consequences and eternal gains. But in a way, we're selling something. We're not doing it for money, and we're not doing it because um, we're trying to gain. We're doing it because we love God. We love people. Amen. Amen. But we're convincing. We're rebuking, and then the Holy Spirit also moves on that and anoints us to be great evangelists. But I've noticed great evangelists, whether they're walking with God or not, they've always been great salesmen when I've had them work for me. And evangelists, if they're not walking with God, they might be popping painkillers. They might be, be, be taking some methamphetamines. They might be doing this or that. They might be on 82nd Avenue selling used cars or some other place. And they're good salesmen. Why? Because God put that gift in there. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're using it for God. They're leading other people um, astray because they're not walking right. They're not doing nothing with their gift. Yeah. But they're going to be held accountable for God for what he put in them and they never walked out. In judgment, maybe they'll, they'll stand accountable. For drugs they sold to people, they will stand before God. They better repent. Because the people that they had fall, the people that they, they were involved with their corruption, that blood is on them. Yeah. And yeah. The, only thing that, the, the only thing that can wash that blood off is the blood of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says the ground cries out for justice. And so when people are doing dirt, there's, there's the satanic unseen realm watching, and there's also God watching. Yes. And, you, and you need to be, you need to be yeah, in a place yeah. of repentance to where you're cleansing yourself and you're walking out. But here he says, this is testimony is true, therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of them who turn from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but the, in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. They're disqualified for every good work. Why? Because nothing's pure for them. They're, they're, they're debased right from the core. But as you... Speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine, that older men may be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, and love and patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine, teachers of the good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own households, that the word of God may be not blasphemed. Likewise, exhort the young men to be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say to of you. If we showed a movie up here of everything that you did in secret, out in the open of bad things in the last <clears throat> month for a half hour, Everything you said and did that was evil and bad. Would there be anything there on the half hour video? Or would it be clean? I'm sure it would be dirty. I'll be honest. 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 No one is perfect. I'm very honest. You met a perfect person with Jesus Christ. I'm yeah. I mean, I think, I think everyone will have it. something up there. I'm not going to sit here and say it. I'm not crazy. It says, exhort, well, we, exhort, we, exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well pleasing in all things, not answering back, 
not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God and Savior of all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteous, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great, our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. Now stop right there, a lawless deed. You see, guys, I want to point something out tonight. You know what the Bible says in Isaiah? That I saw the Lord, His glory filled the temple. It said that His glory filled the temple. It said He saw the Lord, His glory filled the temple. And it said when the king had died, he seen this. And that there, John Revere wrote a book. It was pretty good. I think we might actually have it in our, part of our training. I want the book, Gabe Roberson's book, The Walk of the Spirit, The Walk of Power. But this book that John Revere wrote about the fear of God was really good. He was talking about how the king, I think, I forget which king it was that he died. But he was doing a religious act of going in and, and, and doing something that he wasn't supposed to do. The priests were supposed to do it. But he was doing something, a religious act, in, in pride. And when he died, God's glory filled the temple. But then you have the fear of God lacking with Eli's sons, where they were um, having, um, you know, immoral relationships in the temple. Then you have um, Nahum and Abihu, who offered strange fire, and they were drinking, or they were high. And they came into the temple off of strange fire, and God killed them. So you have people doing being high and being in a wrong demonic spirit because using drugs is a demon spirit, it's witchcraft. Oh, yeah. It opens the door for the devil in a man's life and heart. The man's mind is not gonna be right. Yeah. So but we have that side of it where you're doing this, but you also have side people coming in and trying to act religious with pride. Yeah. See, a spirit of religion, and we were talking about this. The other day, um, Edward and I and, and Jermaine were talking about this, is, is the spirit of religion and pride go together. People do acts and then they feel like they're better than people. They look yeah. down. There's not a sweetness of humility. But the acts that they're doing, God didn't even ask them to do. And they're not doing it out of the fear of the Lord. They're doing it in the wrong motive. See, God doesn't look at what you're doing, the acts. He looks at the heart. The heart. And, and there was a time where these, the prophet Samuel told, uh, he told uh, Saul, he said, hey, don't bring anything back. Don't bring any, any animals back, nothing. Sheep, something. Yeah, nothing. And Saul had brought some uh, animals back. And Samuel heard a cow, you know, mooing or a sheep bag or something, whatever. And he says, hey, what have you done? And then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, uh, he said, he said a real religious statement. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice it for the Lord. <laughs> but but what did the prophet say? He said, obedience is better than sacrifice. And the spirit of the Lord left Saul that day and never returned. And so don't be, don't be playing games with God. Don't be coming in here. And, and I, I had called out one young man that we kicked out this week, and I said, you know what? I know <clears throat> I know for a fact, the Lord showed me you knew that we're connected to all these people that were doing underbelly dirt. But you never said one word, and the blood is on your hands on that. Have you ever looked at somebody and had the Lord tell you they're going to die if they didn't repent, and seen them not repent and they died? That's happened to me multiple times. Yes. <clears throat> and I'm not talking a long ways out, I'm talking like a week yeah. of many of them. Yeah. But but some people are, are prolonging their death. They're even living in death. Even though their life is not snuffed out off this earth, they're in perversion. They're going to hell. They think they're okay. They're not right. It's perversion in the house of God. There's no godly fear. They're twisted. They're a stench. Even in their religious acts, they're a stench. Nothing they're doing. He says right here that, that nothing they're doing is pure. But I said to this, and you know what he said to me? He said these words. I didn't want to be around. And I said, see, that shows how weak you are. Yeah. That shows how literally weak you are. 
See, these people that have a prison mindset, they're all weak. I'll tell you this the truth. I'm not scared to fight anybody, any place, any time. Physically, whether I win or lose. I've been in a lot of fights. I'm a Greco-Roman wrestler. I don't care. But God hasn't called us to brawl, and he's called us to fight unclean spirits. Yeah. But, but these guys out of prison, and these guys that talk this talk, they're such wusses. They're a bunch of punks. I'm telling you why. You know what? I said, you're messed up. I said, look at the way you're thinking. Didn't you hear my, my message on Wednesday? Yeah. I'm like, then what do you want? What do you, didn't that shake you? Are you going to go with what the devil has always done and you've always been in line with the devil? I haven't heard Kelly saying some wrong stuff today to Jacob out there. Talking about the same old thing. He was being weak and he was being molested by the devil and he was taking it because he was basically talking about not ratting and all this. And I said to this man, and I said to this man, I said, hey, I said, um, you need to repent for that, brother. But the thing is, is that I said to this man, I said, see, that's where you're wrong. You went and thought that, you know, in the past, maybe you didn't like a guy. So you didn't want to tell the police or somebody else about what was going on because you, 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 you wanted to go tell on him to do damage to him. So you look at that as a rat. But not once did I say, go tell the police. I said, you need to, if you know a guy that's sitting secretly, you need to go to God in prayer. Yeah. You need to go to that man and physically confront him to try to rescue him from his wrong ways. Then, hold on, you can talk later. But then also, then if you can't go to that man, what are you going to do? And he doesn't bless you, then you go to the leadership. So first of all, we're not talking about going to the police. We're talking about going to the kingdom of heaven, not hurting him. And why are you doing this? Not to hurt the man. But if your motive, in other words, isn't to see somebody totally restored, you're messed up from the beginning and you have no life in you. You're a corpse. You're a whitewashed tomb. Well, brother, I pray in the Spirit. If you really pray in the Spirit, you wouldn't be like that. Yeah. See, here he says, they profess to know God, but their works they deny Him. Being abominable, disobedient, disqualified for every good work. Here he's saying, He's not going to recognize. So he's still bound up in the mind thinking that if he goes to talk to this person, it's to bring him harm. No! It's to bring correction in life. It's to rescue a man. In that Bible, the scripture says, uh, if you see your brother or sister wander from the truth, you are spiritually restored. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you do it because you do it because you love them and you want them to be you want them to get right. And not because you yeah. want them to get in trouble. And, and look at how weak this person was. He was scared of what other people would think about him or the old person mindset. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. When the Holy Ghost comes on the scene, we preach the gospel in Powder River. And there was a man there that had white power tattooed on his arms. He was a huge uh, white bald guy. We didn't preach on tongues. We didn't preach on racism. All of a sudden, my friends, like few times I've ever seen in the history of my time doing ministry, when these 100 or so men came to the altar, the fire of God fell on them, and they all burst out in tongues. Wow. And it wasn't even them even asking for it. And I looked at one man bald, and he's like, oh, 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 praying in tongues, like, what's <laughs> happening to me? I don't know what's happening. And he couldn't stop. He's wow. praying in the Spirit. He came for salvation. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. The fire of God hit the whole line. Oh, yeah. This big old dude, man, he goes over and he hugs his fat black brother. Picks him off the ground, gives him a hug. He says, I want you to see an ex-white supremacist get his black brother out. Oh, I looked at all these white supremacist guys looking at him. And they were like, they were out on the side and they were thinking, okay, we're going to get down. He's like, I don't care if I live or die. I'm walking with God. I've got the fire of God. And this man was a one-man wrecking crew. He could probably take most of them out anyway. But it wasn't about the fear of man. Live or die, I'm walking with Jesus. Amen. The children of Israel said, you know what, King? Whether God saves us or not, we're not bowing down to you and your dumb gold idol. And we don't care if we live or die. We are going to serve God. That's what I want out of you guys. And the reason why I asked um, Sean, I said, clean house. Anybody where you even think they got somebody high or were involved with it, I want them out. I want to start from scratch. Because I prayed on it and I just felt the Lord cleanse the house. Because the guys that are out and they're getting kicked out, they're going to think about their, their ways of doing things too. It might challenge them. Maybe when they're doing dope. Just one of the times we kicked out the other night. I said, now make sure you call this guy, this guy, and this guy. Get in this house because these guys will help you grow. They're going to do something for you. What does it do? 
I find out through the grapevine, he goes out and smokes beer and drinks beer with these guys. Shows me he really didn't want it. If he would have called three of the people that I gave him, he had been in life, not death. Now these guys are welcome to come to church. I would rather somebody be high sitting in the Holy Ghost filled service with an ex-pimp or prostitute that Jesus set free, or an ex-Satanist who Jesus set free, or any one of us anointed ministers in here that Jesus set free, I'd rather them be in here than out in the streets. But I'm not going to let people live with me that accept and want demons. And I'm not going to let people live with me that aren't trying to be right. And I'm not going to let people live here and bring leaven into here that are doing stuff on the sideways where they're not, they're not, um, they're not clear about where they're at, not crying out. Okay? And they might even be crying out. But if I feel like they're going to possibly bring another man down, we got to get them out of here. They can come to the services. They can call me for prayer anytime. I'll go out with them. I love them. But we're building warriors. Yeah. And I don't care if there's just one man in here, two men in here. I don't care if it's, if it's nobody. I would rather just go pray and spend time with God so I can get on my next mission yeah. than be weighed down with people that aren't legit. Yeah. And I don't care how psycho or sideways they are. I don't care if you've had 13 sex changes, if you have gay partners all your life, if you want to get free, this is the place to be. Yeah. And I'll walk through any kind of addiction, homosexuality, any kind of craziness until you can be into freedom because I'll show you how to do it because Jesus did it for me and can do it for you. Yeah. And if you'll do what I say, you'll be free. I don't care how many times you fall, God's gone through hell and back with me. But one thing I never did is I never came to God and justified my sin and tried to look for scriptures in the Bible to do sideways stuff. I always said, Lord, give me a sensitive conscience and let the fear of God be upon me. I've always prayed for that. And just this week, I said, God, many times I walk the floor and these men hear me say, give me wealth and riches to establish your kingdom on the earth. And I've called out for those riches. And Lord, those are, those are financial riches, but they're also not financial riches. It's the riches of knowing you. Yes. And some people don't get it. But I said before that, Lord, let my first heart's desire be for the fear of God and the love of God. Yeah. Because with those two things, I will be sustained and the riches won't take me down the wrong path. I'll get into ministry and be, you know, uh, walking with God and I won't get into pride. No. I, will, I, will, I will endure. So before we're asking for things like God, give me money and give me my bills paid off. Let's ask God, give me a holy divine okay. fear. Let me get an eternal perspective of the way you see things. Yes, yes. Let me understand my life and the light of eternity and all these things that have been going for that don't even matter, that don't even count, that they're not even worthwhile or valuable. And I've been leading my family in the wrong way as a leader, going for temporal things that are going to vanish. And I should have been going through for eternal things that are never going to perish or never, never walk away. And so we need a shifting and, I, and part of the reason why I call out for financial stuff is because about 10 years ago, I asked the Lord, can I go into full-time ministry? I don't want to do business. And I felt the Lord say, no, stay into to ministry. Stay into business. But then it was hard for me because I went through a lot of tough times where I didn't see a lot of finances. So then I'm asking the Lord, why do you even have me here? If I'm not even seeing a lot of money to be able to sow, let me give you some, just some backstory here. But God sees things that we don't, and sometimes God attests us and he allows us to go through things in a process where we grow in our character. Yeah. And so maybe that's why he had me in the business, because I went through a lot of hard things and a lot of hard trials, but I've learned a lot of lessons. I haven't been able to give financially in the way that I wanted to. I've given the two loaves and two fishes I've had in my hand, and it's made a difference for some ministries here and there. But it hasn't been millions like I've wanted. And how I can see that I can do. Um, but, it will be. but let me tell you this. If you're obedient with the little stuff, that's what counts. Because there was a man that came two years ago, I believe, and he put on this thing in Portland, a fire conference, and he didn't have any money. His down payment just to do it was 250000 One of these business guys came up and wrote him a check and said, here's 250000 do it. Then he raised a couple more million and it all came in. But during that week, there was two young men there that um, I know personally. One of them, his dad's not living for the Lord. He's a tradesman over in um, a different city. And he was getting in the same trade his dad was in. And the Lord spoke so powerfully to him that night, he says, I want you to go to Turkey. And now he's in Turkey right now in ministry, two years later. He's just turned 20 years old. He's given up his life for the gospel. 
That's what the fire of God does. Yeah. Another man I know, he said, I want you to go to Ukraine. He's not Ukrainian. He's a family member of mine. He's a young guy. And he was in the midst of the war going on, getting people out there, preaching the gospel, and getting people in there when God spoke to him, I want you to go to Ukraine. This guy is led by the Lord to start this um, revival there and do this fire and glory conference. Didn't have the money. Just did it in obedience. He doesn't know of any of this fruit that happened. This guy that gave $250,000 for the down payment for the facility there in Portland, he doesn't know about this. But when God speaks to you to do some stuff, there's going to be eternal fruit that's going to be far beyond what you can ask, think, or imagine. And sometimes we don't know all the reasons. We think, okay, I'm going to do this, and we have our best idea. But the main thing is hearing God and obeying Him and having a right heart about doing stuff. You're doing stuff because you love God and you love people. Not, not because of any other thing. Because you show and, and not And not doing things that are dirty, underhanded, sideways. Not being one way in front of some people and another way on the side. You should be the same all the way. Yeah, if you're dealing drugs, you should try to sell me drugs. Yeah. Why are you such a punk? Why are you on the one side doing stuff here or there? You know, what are you really dealing? What are you doing? What is... If we took everything that you said about everybody in the last month, and these are the guys that left too, yeah. what have they said about me that they haven't said in my face? Wow. Yeah. I can tell you this, as much as possible, sometimes people don't like me, and sometimes even today I was a little rough. But I try to always tell people to their face what I can say to them behind their face. Yeah. And when somebody comes to talk to me about somebody, if they're talking dirt, I say, no, let's get that person on the phone right yeah. now. And it's funny yeah. how many times yeah. their story changes sometimes. And I'm always encouraging people. No, you go talk to this guy. You got an issue with him. Go talk to him. Yeah. That's a demon spirit that's trying to resist that person. They need to get over their pride and go talk to that person and work it out. Because this is another human being that the blood of Jesus has been shed for and that the blood has been spilt for. This message uh, tonight is really not a message. It's more just a talk. Yeah. And this scripture that I was reading is right out of, out of Titus. And I want to finish reading this and then, and then we'll close. And um, we want to ask the Lord, not at the altar here tonight, but we want to leave this place and ask the Lord that he cleanses us yes. and that the fear of God yeah. hits us. And that we understand what's at stake for not only us, for other people. You know, I had a guy talk to me this week. And he said, you know, he goes, my youth pastor, he had a son that turned gay. And I thought, well, that's no big deal. He can be reached. He can be, you know, gotten in this and that. But he said, then my own son had come to me last year who has two kids. And he said that he wanted a sex change. And now he doesn't go by his name. He goes by a woman's name. And I, taught, I told this man, I said, I know what you're risking. When you come out and you're very honest with this young man who's your son, I said, first of all, I see that the devil set this up over a process with this man. And, and I said, there was people that, that groomed him, saying, we're proud of you. Wow. Go for it. And he said, yes. He's involved with big tech companies, Facebook and other people. All the employees, all the people cheered him on. But the little boy came to grandpa and said, Grandpa, I, I, I don't have a daddy. And he's like, you know, when it wasn't my own kid, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Sure. But when it's come right to home, sure. I need to stand up, and I've started to stand up. He sure. says, the problem is I might alienate my son. Sure. I said, well, listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for your son. We're going to start calling him in. But I said, one thing you can't do. You gotta accept him no matter what, because the blood of Jesus has been you know, shed for him. And you got to accept him and love him. But you can't ever approve of yeah. this perverted behavior, this perverted things. In Romans it says that if we do these things or approve of these things, we're worthy of death. So Satan is in the courts of heaven saying, ah, ah that person just right there listened to CNN. And they said, you're a hater if you don't agree or approve of homosexuality. Satan says, this person just approved of homosexuality because of CNN and because of these different media outlets. Now they're worthy of death, God. Your word says it. I'm holding them accountable. 
Satanic spirits listen to you and they, they're very legalistic. When I cast devils out, I know legal terms in the unseen realms of courts of heaven in order to get demons to obey me to go. I'm saying if you approve of these things, we want to be nice to people. So the devil gets us into deceiving him away from the word of God and then we start approving these things. We're really supposed to love the people and accept them because the blood of Jesus was shed for them. And because they're valuable and they can be reached. But in that activity, doing it or approving it, you're worthy of death. That's the word of the Lord. That's the word of God. Well, that's a little rough. Well, that's the truth. Yeah. And you better stay in the truth unless you want to fall off the cliff. And you better shake people who are about ready to go off the cliff. Say, no, turn away from this way. And the repentance. And so, but then look at what Paul says. He says, but don't judge a person like you're better than them. Because you've also masturbated. You've also looked at porn. You've also slept with somebody outside of marriage. So don't be crowned up like you're better than them. It's only the blood of Jesus that has cleansed oh, you yes. and made you whole and made you family member. So we see the church either taking a side where we're, we're saying, oh, all homosexuals go to hell. Which is not a message of the Father. The message of the Father is the goodness of God draws men. People repent. The, the message of the Father is God so loved the homosexual that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But the message is also this, is when that life comes to you, it changes you and doesn't leave you in a place of sin. I didn't keep on beating cats up to where I was smashing their faces in the metal buses multiple times when I got saved. I repented of that. I, I couldn't say, well, brother, you just need to love me the way I am. But that's what these people are doing. But then, but then, then Paul, but see, as a church, we're either not preaching the Father's love for people, or we're coming to the place where we're accepting them and ordaining them as ministers and perverting the truth and piercing ourselves with many lies. So my friends, the Bible has always been the narrow way. It's never been to the right or the left. It's always been the narrow way. And so even on this subject, we got to toe the line. And we can't ever compromise and we can't ever approve or offer those words. If you love people... You're going to lovingly tell them that Jesus loves them yeah. and that they need to turn to him and surrender to him. And everything that they're doing in their life, they should be able to bring into the heaven and the courts of heaven in that judgment. And if they can't, they need to yield it and lay it down at the cross and walk away. And so this is a message of hope, but it's a message, my friend, of repentance and change. I never stayed the same, and you didn't either. So why are we being so soft with these issues? We're killing future generations because we're not standing up and saying, no, yeah. this is wrong. Yeah. No, you can't move in with your boyfriend or girlfriend before you're married. How many young people are going to these big churches now and they're just sleeping around? Come on, man. Stop that crap. You're cursing your, your life. Yeah. God judges fornication, sex outside of marriage. And that's a man and a woman, not two men or two, two women. You know? So let's get down to the business that we need to get down to. If you've been responsible for sorcery, getting into alcoholism and drinking to where you're drunk or getting high, then you need to repent of that. And if you caused other people to do that, you need to ask God to forgive you. And much iniquity is on your hands for causing other people to walk in sin in your past. And you better turn away from that and all these people that you let into sin, dealing drugs and selling drugs and being involved in that, you better be involved with bringing many sons to glory, going out and preaching the gospel and getting, you better be twice as hardcore at winning souls as you ever were for selling dope. Yep. Because you brought all these sons to witchcraft and hell, why not be more on fire and work for God harder than ever before since the grace set you free and now you're in life and not death. Right? Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. So, you know, tonight, uh, this is, a, you know, this is just a, a discussion, a talk. But sometimes we don't really get into fighting mode until the, the battle's in our own family yeah. and on our own doorstep. Yeah. But we need to fight. We need to fight tonight for the gay, the gay community. We need to fight for those who CNN, CNBC, all the people of the world have told them you can get a sex change at a young age, and they do this stuff. 
We need to fight for these people. This mutilation of young people the where they're having surgery and taking drugs for puberty blockers when they don't even know what's going on and they're deceived and yet they're walking into these gardens. We even need to fight for the 50-year-olds that are being weird now. And all of a sudden the demons come on from our society and all these Amazon and Facebook and Twitter and whatever are promoting this stuff. I'm not proud of sin. I'm ashamed of my sin. I'm ashamed of my sin. But God's wiped the shame away from me. Now I'm not, no longer walking in guilt, condemnation, or shame because I'm washed in the blood and I'm holy and righteous. So I don't walk with my head down. I walk with my head up because the blood of Jesus has cleansed me and made me a son. But we are not proud of any sin, including homosexuality. And we're turning from it and shaking men and women to get out and get, get, get out of that. Get out of this business. And you know, some of these people, my friends, have been abused, sexually abused by gays and homosexuals, even from their <coughs> age. And sometimes not even gays and homosexuals. Sometimes it was just um, sexual experiences, aunts and uncles. And they didn't know their identity because somebody in the family member took advantage of them. And where are you if you're not walking in the power of God to bring the fire of God? To bring Jesus to them, to where it snaps them out of that uh, comatose state that they were in because they were abused. You got the fire, you got the answer, you got the truth, and you can bring it to them to set them free. And that's what we need to do. We need to set the captives free. There's so many kids that are walking through abuse now single parent families, people not watching out for them, and then they're getting pawned off to this person, that person. Or maybe you grew up in a home, man, where, where addiction was rampant, where anger was rampant, or all these things. And, and, and now you need to be a sweet smell of fragrance of Christ, man. Not in you talking about Jesus only, but in you living it and walking it out in your life. It's got to come out, man. Amen. And so we want to do that. We want to be that those, those people. And and the ones that we're gonna uh, be bringing into the home um, are, are there. It's gonna be for the schooling. And I I spent the week putting some curriculum together and putting more curriculum. I'm going to get together with um, the board of directors and we're, we're going to start these classes and we're going to start putting them out there Amen. because we can't wait. We need to build warriors, you know, and a lot of people, they don't know what they don't know. They've just been around the church and there's just, just a lot of milky basic stuff. Yeah. There wasn't ever any, any kind of spiritual warfare stuff, you know. How many Christians do you think in Clark County know if they need to cast out a devil? They really know how to cast out a devil or pray for the sick, or lead some of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, or even hear from the Holy Spirit on the direction of their life. I mean, come on, man. We need to hear and obey. So I'm, I'm stirred up, and uh, I want to stir you guys up, you know, to good works, and myself to good works. I want to cry out to God. I want to be right before the Lord. I don't want to be wrong. Yes. I don't want to be in... in um, Not be ready. I just, I just want to, even beyond not being ready, I want to love Jesus. Yeah. Love your heart, my I, love Jesus. I mean, my concern is, is us not having a, just a close walk with Him. He's my Savior. And part of, the, part of the reason why we saw so much so much of this fallout is we saw people, you know, carrying a Bible, but they didn't truly love Jesus. Because if they did, they would have been repenting at the altar of these things and exposing them. And then saying, hey, brother, I need prayer. Because, man, when, when I was first starting out with the Lord, in my walk with the Lord, I was like, hey, man, pastor, can you pray, pray for me? Why do I want to sin? Why do I want to do this? I wasn't doing stuff on the side to see what I get away with. That's retarded. You got no relationship. And when they preached grace to me, I didn't use that to go out and do more stupid stuff. I used that to allow God to change my life. But a good dose of holy fear has a good dose. We need a dose of fear. We need that to come in us to just, just say, hey, it, you know, money aside, the things of this world aside, everything aside, there's a lot more serious things going on. And that's your eternal soul. That's your eternal destiny. And that's the eternal destinies of other people that are on the line. And they're going to church and they're playing games and they're not right. And they're doing this and that and they ain't right. And they're, and they're just playing around. And it's... it's um, it's dangerous. And we got to yeah. repent. So, Lord, I just thank you for this gathering tonight. Yes. I ask God that you, um, Lord, just 
Let us, let each one of us, God, examine. And I pray, Lord, that you would reveal to each and every one of us doors tonight that need to be surrendered, that need to be laid down. Maybe, God, we have false idols, things that we loved more than you. Yes. Maybe we loved ourselves yeah. and loved pleasure. Maybe we loved money. Yeah. Maybe we loved this or that. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. Wash us tonight. And Lord, it's only we invite you in because it's only by your spirit yes. that you are going to cut these things off because we can't do it in our own strength. Yes, so Holy Spirit, we ask for your help. Jesus, we ask for your help yes. to expose things in us that aren't right and, and to remove, Lord, things that are wrong and to shift <laughs> things in our soul, our spirit, soul, body. Yes. So that way, God, we're right with you. Yes. Lord, we want to be right. And God, we want to be in a place, God, where the things that we're doing, Lord, are righteous. Yes. The things that we're doing are of you. We want to be a place, God, that, that Father God...